It seems also not only in the corporate world, everyone now looks to like each quarter is like uh, life ending. Oh my God, what's happening this quarter? What's happening this quarter? It seems almost like government's the same way is that instead of thinking, listen, this project's going to take 10 or 15 years. Like politicians are kind of like, oh, uh, let's, do we have one that's three years or two and a half? Like, because I need to get reelected or I need this, I need that. Exactly. Like, that, 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 is, that is the that is the the problem that you you have a lot of folks who think about it in that kind of way what is it going to do for me yeah right like no offense no offense to anyone but at the end of the day the reason why the new scale project was forced on idaho was because the chairman at the time of the of the appropriations committee was was chairman simpson and he's an he's the congressman at large for idaho Right. Yeah. And I think he's like the one. I think they might have two, but I, I think he was at the time one or whatever. He became the appropriations chair and he wanted the project in Idaho. So they did it in Idaho. And UAMS was basically told, you're doing this, right? But then the local folks couldn't get it done. Now, why is he doing it that way? Was it the best thing to do? I, no one knows. It didn't obviously work out. Could it have been better? Who knows? But at the end of the day, can you blame the guy? He's the chairman of the appropriations commit energy subcommittee he's the chief appropriator and therefore he's going to make sure the money comes to this district and makes jobs for his people yeah now when you have those kind of considerations inside the the minds of the politicians what you end up with is not an actual well thought out strategy what so i think with uh with you guys what are some milestones? I mean, right now you're, you mentioned before you're raising money. You're, you know, obviously that's all, who won't take money. I mean, it's great to, you know, it's tough markets. I wouldn't um, take, a, I, I would not take more than six. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I'm looking for a bunch of strategic investors. Yeah. Um, you know, either investing oriented types or even uh, family offices, strategic uh, partner types that are looking for, that long-term play yeah. who are going to support the team and to get it to hit the milestone. So what is the next milestone? The next milestone is that within the next two years, by the end of 2025, we are going to um, finish our demonstration and we are going to use that demonstration to start producing isotopes Perfect. for for various customers in the United States in both the industry and the def defense department on, a, on the Curie scale, which is like on the very small me measurement. So what we're when we're talking about the facility, we're talking about we have we have this actual design with an architect team where you yes are building this over here and there's obviously the head like headquarters and yep. other type of facilities here, trying to give it that really environmentally nice look. But basically, yes. the there's the so at a full scale. At, with a combination of deoxyfluorination and electrolysis, we would do a 96% reduction of the nuclear waste Yeah, with a 300-year maximum storage burn-in. And it's this modular, compact, and integrated design. So it has these tri-vessel, uh, basically vertically integrated, and you build 10 of these in here. Yes. That's kind of like what it looks like when it serves as this tech corridor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we're projecting... An annual reactor revenue from the fuel will be able to build, make about two billion, twelve billion in revenue. This is like these numbers are projected for early next decade. Yeah, two billion in recycling revenue and two billion in fuel revenue, and about more than a billion now in in annual isotope revenue. Wow. And and our our and that's kind of like the like what is when you close the fuel cycle, so you could reduce the new the volume of waste. Yeah. You get recycled fuel for reactors, Gen 4 reactors, advanced reactors, spacecraft yes. applications, medical isotopes, industrial isotopes, and defense applications. And um, and that would be like a, our reactor design, the HOPE reactor. Yes, cool. Our yes. homogeneous plutonium, plutonium aluminum reactor. And I told you about that. Yes, yeah. And we have um, the, the ecosystem of like again other kind of like image of like that tech corridor yes that will build and then our go-to-market strategy is essentially this first stage that by 2025 we'll have our experiments done our chemical kinetics 
lab skill demo and early revenue opportunities that because a lot of these isotopes are valuable on the Curie la already as a Curie. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then by 2028, we plan to have, complete our pilot and then be cash flow positive over here and then go for a full project financing in a five year period, build up to full scale at 4,000 metric tons a year, which will be double the global capacity for recycling. Wow. But it's great to see as well, like those, that projection there. So people understand, like, listen, uh, yeah, this is a long term project, but these are the numbers we're talking about. Right. You're talking about at 4,000 metric yeah. tons, you're talking about 40% of the fuel for legacy fleets, 40 metric tons of fuel for advanced reactors, 10 plus types of isotopes. And then you're going to be powering over 30 million homes. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of potential. And by the way, these yes. are our lab resources that we're already doing the experiments with right now. Yeah. So we're all integrating all three of these together into one vertically integrated. And essentially in our impact, like what we've done already, so we have our four national lab partners, already our seven and a half million in DOE awards with RPE. We've already 10 off-take partners. Uh -huh. yeah. We're already engaging with six states to site. And the states, nice. when you tell them that you're bringing the nuclear waste to recycle, but you tell them how many you're going to bring 10,000 jobs with your facility. Yes. It's a completely different conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So they're like, okay, well, that's great. So like when people, Ed McGinnis obviously is our CEO. He's been 30 years of DOE management, including serving assistant secretary of, of nuclear energy. And he was the PCAS for President Trump. We have Vic Singh, who's the co-inventor of New Cycle. And we have Shane Johnson, management experience, including he's assistant secretary for science and technologies, our chief program officer. So combined, he and Ed have 30 years of DOE management experience. Yeah. And then we brought in the this really, look at this diverse group. Oh, I know. Of it's... Engineers. Great people. And then we have our support staff here. And our advisory board is extremely impressive. Joe Grimes, TVA Chief Generation Officer, Chief, Chief Generation Officer, and Chief Nuclear Officer for TVA, and then also Exelon, PICO. And then also Dr. Lawrence Miller runs the UTK nuclear program, Allen Systems. He was uh, did a State Department dipl the diplomat. He's one of the people who was the researchers who focused on quarks and uh, subatomic particles at CERN. Wow. Very cool. Holy Alan God. Brownstein was the uh, chief operating officer of Yucca Mountain Project. Yeah. Wolfgang Rundi ran the isotope program at the Department of Energy. So that's how we got that isotope program covered. And then the non-proliferation, we got a Republican and a Democrat here. Excellent, yeah. Both, who are both on non-pro non-pro folks to help us on our safeguards and yes. our and our materials and uh, accounting and stuff like that. We have Amy Roma and, and a bunch of others like the advisors. And, that's it's yeah. very impressive, yeah. So that's kind of our whole motto. Yeah. To deny the rebirth of nuclear energy is to deny human ingenuity and aspiration, said. Dr. Alvin Weinberg. So we, he said, I believe that this struggling ingenuity will be equal to the task of creating the second nuclear era. So he went and we trademarked the second nuclear era. I love it. Yes. It's better than, it sounds, it's, it's, it's easier as well than, you know, nuclear renaissance. It sounds a bit too. No, the second nuclear era. Nuclear that's era sounds going, better. That's what we call it. Yeah. So I'll show you one second. Hold on here. So this, give you guys, you give, we're going to give you guys a little sneak peek. Oh, excellent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, oh yes. Oh, target. great. The rise of fall in nuclear era and how the United States ushered a second nuclear era. And here's the table of contents so far. Oh, wow. Table. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Shaw Doctrine. Yeah, yeah. Nuclear status report. Closures everywhere. Regulatory labyrinth. The regime of radiophobia. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Place to never went away. The failure of MOX. Help end of the string uranium 233. Yes. Gulf to markets. Again, this is a work in progress. Yeah. It's already 98 pages in. That's excellent. It's going to be quite, yeah, it'll be huge. <laughs> yeah, we have the second year facing the challenges. And we basically, obviously, it's all a plug here in the end. But yeah, yeah. I love but this line, the last one. The fusion delusion. Oh, my goodness. We talked about that last time a bit. I know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for it. I like it because it's my hopium. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're doing it through like the AS or like the, the CNX or whatever it is, and you're just playing in the stock market and buying stocks for some of these companies, all the power to you. But like, but look, Andrew, you're, you're doing, you're a long-term player. So yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to wait for 30 years for fusion, 
then then, then I'm cool with you, you know? Yeah. yeah. But if anybody who tells you they're not, they're going to have fusion in 10 years is like smoking some good stuff. Yes. And, uh, and, and obviously in a state where it's legalized, of course. Of right? course, of course. We don't even yeah. look at it as an investment point of view. I'll just go whenever I'm having a really bad day or I'm really annoyed and I'm, everything looks bleak and I'll go, let's look at fusion and, or let's look at uh, like some of the wild generative AI where you're like, they're going to do all this work for you. <laughs> and it's like, well, we're not there yet, but we're always just 10 years. I want to get there. I, <laughs> I, tell, I tell people all the time, if there was a real, like, like I would be totally down with like these, like, um, like doing the, uh, uh, the Neuralink stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If, if there's no way that you could take over my body and, 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 and control me. Yes. That's, I mean, I love that idea. I think, Oh my God, you just access things so easily. But then I think, Oh, if how crazy. Yeah. If you were able to suddenly just like, you know, have a way to access all of your memories. Oh my goodness. And yeah. Everything. And just like, it just speeds everything up for you. And yeah. And, and then you could like, okay. I like as, as a, as a founder and as a, as a, you know, as an innovative, as an innovator, and as a visionary, you also don't have to like live with the with the sins of your past that you didn't. You know, I'm not a traditional founder in the sense that even though I have this little venture studio, that I'm actually going to be grow up. So at, once I finish raising the money for Curio for their two year runway, I'm going to start a venture studio specifically for deep tech. That's okay. My next phase. Very good. Okay, I want to do that. So, but could you right now? But at the end of the day, I don't understand deep tech. Like, I mean, I understand it as an innovator and as a business guy, but and yeah. that's where I think I have expertise, actually. I don't understand it from the perspective of a technical expert, right? Like, yes. I don't have the physics slash chemistry slash multidisciplinary yes. skill set, right? Yes. So imagine now you have Neuralink and you basically, like, the Matrix can just upload all of that information into your brain. And now you're Tony Stark, right? Yeah. So... Then you, anyone, and obviously, okay, so like you have to spend, I don't know, like they'll probably charge you for those packages because they're not going to sure. be for free. No. And you're going to have to, you're going to call up, you're going to go to Harvard and they're going to upload you with the entire Harvard course. Um, yeah. Right. And just boom, you now have an MBA from Harvard after you uploaded it. Yeah. And now you know everything there is to know about a business with a, with a, I don't know, and they'll have like, updates where they update you on the most interesting stuff yeah it's right? like selling a new textbook <laughs> exactly that's exactly what they'll do they'll say okay do you want the new textbook and you're going to be like swiping 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 like with your eyes looking yeah. right, and right and left but like, no this is a piece of garbage i already have the old one once they pick pick one word yeah. and don't don't they they're you're like i don't care if it's got a new forward <laughs> exactly i don't really care what the forward is right and then there'll be like like hacks that you could like basically like the way that we everything will be pirated, right? So you could go and pirate like yes, you want the you want it like the illegal stuff, right? Like well, that's a thing, yeah. Nuclear weapons, right? Yes, like, and you get a hack. Like, you say you buy a, a hacked whatever. All of a sudden, if someone put a little like a little problem into your brain, there exactly. Little loop. Now they literally now you're literally like your whole body's shutting down because the yes. neuralink is telling you. So I don't know. I, it's scary and exciting at the same time. Yes. Like I am a futurist. I want the world to go that direction. Yeah. I do believe that humanity is going to have to transcend to become an interplanetary species. Yes. Yeah. It's going to happen and we're not going to get there without nuclear power. So yes. Yeah. New yeah. scale might be a problem, but in conclusion, nuclear is here to stay. That's my call. Excellent. And I really like the fact that you're on the solutions end of that first uh response back from anyone who says no you know because safety people were kind of moving away from that when they're realizing it but when they they look and go well what are you doing with the waste well this is what you're doing with the waste right here exactly and uh that's the type of thing that i think people are going to become more and more keenly aware of as we grow the nuclear fleet aggressively but uh in all fairness they're gonna need to do some major changes in the next five years to get there in 20. Yes. There, I think there has to be a whole bunch of changes. And then just, uh, I think my hope is that the, the U.S. can come together. They don't have to carry on everything, but you go, listen, there's something bigger at stake. We're going to put our heads together, uh, kind of like you'd see in the 20s and in the 40s and 50s. And you go, yeah, we've absolutely. got a bigger fight. Let's just do this. Focus. Everyone's going to work hard. You're all, you're all going to do your part. 
and uh, you get back to that kind of like, I'm a GM guy or I'm a Ford guy. You're like, I'm a Curio guy. I'm a this guy, whatever it is. And uh, that people have a sense of pride that they're part of something bigger. And I think that would be a much better society to live in anyway. No, 100%. I think that we, we we're going to get there because we're kind of getting forced to to uh, get, get there. Get there as well. But sometimes sometimes we need a little pushing before we get we do the yeah. right thing sometimes. <laughs> 100%. Well, excellent. Thank you so much, Rabbi Moskowitz. I really oh, appreciate it. Pleasure.